Great. Um, so what I'm going to do, very try and very quickly go through just the top order of the RBVI plugins, apps. They will be apps as time goes on. I want to hit on what the features are upcoming that we're currently working on and um, sort of what I'm currently thinking of in terms of my porting schedule of getting all these over to 3.0. If anybody has some spare time and you want to help me get things over to 3.0, I'd love the help. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about one app in particular, which I've been doing a lot of work on lately, which is ChemViz, and I'm going to try and do this fast. So top order, um, the RBV app, RBVI apps, 53,000 downloads. So um, this is a, a, a core set of apps that are widely used in um, Cytoscape. Um, the MetaNode plugin um, is now part of the 3.0 core. So I'm not going to port it. <laughs> um, so it's already there. Name Selection plugin is a plugin that used to um, work in Cytoscape 2, and it did, it sort of remembered selections. It used the group mechanism. Um, I, my, we'll have to see if that's, you know, if that's worth porting. I'm sort of at, on the fence about whether it makes sense to port that. So if any users have any strong feelings, I'd love to hear from you. Group tool, um, again, that's another one that if people want it, I'll move it over. That's a tool that allows you to pick an attribute and automatically create meta nodes based upon that attribute. So if you have a categorized attribute, you can go through and you can automatically create the meta nodes for that. Um, I'm happy to port that. It's a real trivial port, but at this point, I don't have any specific plans on putting that. The larger um, ones, um, StructureViz. StructureViz is going to go over pretty soon, I think. We have a student coming in February that's going to be working in our lab, um, specifically on looking at residue interaction networks. And the idea of StructureViz is I'm sitting in my Cytoscape network, and I have a PDB annotation, and I want to open up into a um, structural visualization of that. StructureViz allows you to do that. It ties in with UCSF Chimera in a bi-directional way. If you select something in Chimera, you'll see the selected nodes in Cytoscape and vice versa. ClusterMaker is probably the biggest plugin that we have. It currently has, I think, 11 or 12 clustering algorithms. Um, a number of different visualizations, including um, a full JTree view heat map visualizer. Um, I'm hoping to get that over very soon. We're waiting on um, a student that we've been working with, which is porting in a new algorithm to ClusterMaker called HOPAC. And I want to get that work done before I start the 3.0 porting. Um, SFLD Loader, you heard um, Patsy Babbitt talk yesterday. SFLD Loader is a plug-in to Cytoscape that accesses the SFLD, um, and you can download networks um, directly into Cytoscape from the SFLD. Um, and uh, we're in the midst, we have no plans to port that as such. Um, as part of our more recent renewal, we have a lot of ideas on how to refactor and completely um, rethink how that works, including the ability to take an unknown protein throw it against the SFLD and get back a network with your protein in that. And we want to be able to do that all from within the Cytoscape framework. So um, that rewritten plugin will be in Cytoscape 3 directly. Biopsych plugin, it's a pretty easy port. Um, I'll probably do that right after ChemViz is ported. Um, the node chart plugins, which is the ability to draw charts on nodes, we're not going to port that. We've replaced it. Um, with the Enhanced Graphics plugin. Um, this is sort of an early look at that, and you can see the kinds of things you can do. Um, you can see that these show up down here in this, in um, both the network overview. They're saved with the network as PDF, all that kind of good stuff. These are um, full um, vector graphics, so they'll scale very nicely in, in your um, output. What's waiting right now is um, we're designing a, a user interface. So this, at this point, this is sort of a, uh, a uh, developers only plugin. Um, command tool, which is the command line and command file processing that we use in Cytoscape 2. Um, we're not going to port that. We're, our hope is that that's going to become a core feature in 3.1. So you'll be able to have a Cytoscape script file that will have a number of different commands in it 
that will cause Cytoscape to read in a network and visualize it. And hopefully, if your plugin is appropriately written, users will be able to take advantage of your plugin. So they can use commands to talk to your plugin. So you can read a, you can write a nice, pretty elaborate script file. And I have a lot of examples of those um, that do some pretty cool things if you're interested. Um, and then SciAnimator, which is a keyframe-based animation um, for Cytoscape. And at this point, I have no specific schedule. Um, you know, maybe Sabine and I can talk about pieces of this that we want to share, and, and maybe I don't need to do this, which would be great. OK, um, so how was that for quick? Uh, so what I want to do now is talk about um, some work that we've been doing on um, a new plugin, or well, a plugin that's been around for a while, but we've recently enhanced substantially. And um, that's this plugin called Chemviz. Um, Chemviz is a plugin that allows you to do um, uh, chemical visualization and analysis on a Cytoscape network. Um, Fundamentally, we did this. We had some users here at UCSF. There was some interest. It was originally a Google Summer of Code project. Um, we developed that, launched it out. Everything was going well. We were getting, you know, tens of downloads. And then I got a question from a collaborator who said, could you add this feature? I said, sure. And he said, why don't you look at this website and it describes what the feature is. And then there's this, I find that there's this whole community which is describing how to use ChemViz and how to use it particularly in um, this uh, open source malaria drug project. And there's a fair amount of enthusiasm for that. So that was enough to get me to start working on Chem ChemViz. So the current um, features that ChemViz has, if you download it today, is it allow you to display 2D structures in grid format. You enter the structure as an attribute, a smiles um, string. Very simple. Um, it'll calculate and display a wide variety of chemical descriptors. Um, and you can also um, calculate those descriptors and show them on a table. Or you can put them in your Cytoscape attributes. Um, and then so then they'll just get saved with the session and all those good stuff. You can um, display 2D structures on nodes. Um, and you can calculate chemical similarity networks. Patsy talked about um, protein similarity networks using BLAST, um, chemical similarity networks um, which use uh, fingerprints and take a Tanimoto coefficient of those fingerprints are very common in um, cheminformatics. So that's a key part of um, ChemVis. So what have I been working on? Um, what we've done is um, we've added the maximal common substructure capability. So if I get a group of nodes, and I say, show me the maximum common substructure of that. There's now the ability to calculate that. Not only that, optionally, I can calculate the maximum common substructure. I can create a meta node. I can collapse that group into the meta node and affix the maximum common substructure under the meta node as on um, the smile string. So that gives me a way to summarize dense networks with a series of meta nodes. Um, you can now search the compound table using smarts. Um, which is a chemical searching capability. And um, you can now select a small set of nodes and create a new um, similarity network with just that set of nodes. Um, it turned out um, I had some internal users that were using this. And um, I found out, unfortunately, that um, the fingerprints, which I was just using the default fingerprints, that fingerprints in chem informatics matter. And there are many to choose from. And um, every, um, every user seems to have their favorite. So rather than try and figure out which one's the best, I, I added the capability for the user to choose. So there's a bunch in there. Um, we, I switched from the CDK to PubChem because most people are, finger, uh, are familiar with the um, PubChem fingerprints. I added a bunch of new compound descriptors where you can say, oh, give me all the Lipinski descriptors, give me all the SDF descriptors, and it'll calculate a whole bunch of descriptors at one. And a couple of other new descriptors is requested by some users. Um, 2D structures on nodes are now drawn as vectors. Oh, this turned out to be the biggest part of this task. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So. Um, there is a nice, pretty 2D structure, right? Look at the zoom level. So if I zoom this back out, which is what you would sort of, 
you know, want to see. You can see why it matters when you draw these as vectors. If these were images in any way, shape, or form, either this is going to be a huge PDF file if I use um, very high resolution images, or they're going to pixelate very badly. But this allows somebody to take a network, to dump it out, and then to cut bits and pieces of it and use it for their paper as they want. So, um, and it turned out that that was a lot of times. Um, I did a bunch of cleanup. We've been doing some menu cleanup on Cytoscape 3, and that sort of motivated me to uh, do some menu cleanup in ChemViz. And I talked about the ability to use um, scripting um, in Cytoscape 2. That's through something called Psi commands. So I added a bunch of Psi command um, to um, ChemViz. So quickly, um, how am I doing on time, Alex? Um, so this is ChemViz. Um, this is Cytoscape, but ChemViz is loaded. Um, I can, I have ChemInformatics. I can show the compound table for these nodes. Um, pretty much um, most of the algorithms in here are now multi-threaded. So I have four cores on my Macintosh, and it will happily chew out all four cores. Um, and uh, that I get about a 3x performance improvement um, with the multi-threading. So I can do sorting of this. I can look at hydrogen bond acceptors, for example. Um, and I can add new columns. Either I can bring my Cytoscape um, attributes into my table if I want to include those. Or I can calculate a bunch of um, parameters for the chemistry and go through and do that. And that all gets added into the table. And I can remove, do the same thing from the table. Um, so um, and then. The other thing that we can do is I'll zoom in on this. And you can see that I've already painted um, the vectors on here. Um, so I can grab this same thing. And now what I can do is take this. Most of the commands are available either through the menu up here or through context menu. Um, but in this case, I'll calculate the maximum common substructure of those selected nodes. It's going to calculate it, and there it is. Um, and I could collapse this, and that would become the, um, the uh, structure for that collapsed metanode. OK? Um, uh, the code is all there to support Inchi as well as, um, as well as Smiles. For those that are into cheminformatics, I'm fighting a bug right now, which is actually preventing me from le releasing this with the uh, Inchi um, part of the CDK code. Um, I hope to be able to fix that soon. So um, what am I doing? Um, more cleanup and polish. That means things like fix the Inchi um, for those who want to use Inchi or remove it and don't even support Inchi. I've got to make a decision about that. Um, and then I want to release this thing. Um, I've talked with a collaborator. We're going to get a paper out on it. Um, I want to be able to do a smarts query over the entire network. Um, rather than just in the table, it would be um, pretty useful just to be able to pop up a, an editor and type in a smarts query. Even more useful would be to pop up a um, chemical sketcher and sketch your substructure and um, then search for that. And then obviously, and it will probably happen before the smarts um, query, um, I'm just going to keep forging ahead on ChemViz, and that will be my first 3.0 port. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get that straight over onto 3.0. Um, one of the problems that I've got right now is they're missing features in 3.0 for some of the command capabilities. So I've got all of, all of these plugins that I've just showed you all have Psi command um, interfaces to them, which is really, really useful for batch um, processing. Unfortunately, I don't have that capability in 3.0. Um, some of that is on the list for 3.1. So I have to decide if I leave that capability behind when I do my port or wait for 3.1. How'd I do? <laughs> Questions? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good question. Um, it depends. It really depends on um, the uh, how much time um, I'm going to put into figuring out how to do the cycle. Um, the rest of this is relatively easy. In fact, for example, the vector drawing. Um, I did the um, 
the, that capability in 3.0, I wrote the API for that with ChemDiv in mind. So that will go easier than it did to get this working here. Everything else should be really straightforward. Um, one of the things that I want to do, and, I, and any of you app developer out here, here's my plea. Um, be very, very careful about how your UI and your application function interact. Because in 3.1, we hope to release a headless version of Cytoscape. There will be no UI. And you'd really like your app to be able to continue to run. So you want to think very hard about how bundled your UI is. So that's the other thing is I've got to think about how that all lays out. So how many hours? Um, probably a week. You know, if I had a week. 